So dear colleagues and friends, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce this very interesting roundtable for EPCR 220. And we will focus today on the best real world application for shockwave intravascular lithotripsy. So as you know that intravascular lithotripsy is a promising new technology which disrupts coronary calcification, increase visceral compliance prior to stent angioplasty. And you know that preliminary studies are very exciting, a very excellent safety profile, a good effectiveness. But you know that the patients included in this kind of study are not those that we are encountering in our daily practice. And so far, uh, we wish to focus this symposium on uh, how to manage and the best real world application for shockwave and travascular lithotripsy. And for that purpose, I'm delighted today to be to share this round table with two world-renowned experts, Professor Javier Escanet from Madrid and Professor Michael Lee from Hong Kong. Thank you to be there with us. The timeline of the round table will be organized around three main lectures uh, illustrated by uh, clinical cases. Uh, Javier Escanet will share with us his uh, experience of uh, complex lesion uh, of left main disease, calcific lesion of left main disease, while Michael Lee will focus on how Hyveril can be an interesting adjunctive tool in very complex lesion. For my part, I will have a quick overview on uh, the outcome of daily practice for that patient. But before going further, I will ask Michael to present uh, quickly the shockwave system for those that are not confident with that and how does it work on uh, coronary calcification. Michael, please. Okay, thank you, Benjamin. So the shockwave system actually consists of a generator and a shockwave catheter. The generator will produce electrical activity and uh, in the form of electrical energy. This energy will travel through the uh, uh, catheter, the cable, and all the way to the little tripsy emitters. With this, uh, you would cause expanding and collapsing vapor bubble inside the uh, balloon and this creates a short burst of sonic pressure waves and these waves will travel through the vessel tissue with an effective pressure of about 50 atmospheres and uh, this um, uh, 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 pressure waves will actually fracture preferentially the intima as well as the media calcium making the vessel more compliant and facilitate further the uh, stand, stand implantation procedure. This is how it works for the shockwave balloon. Thank you, Michael, for this uh, great explanation of how does it work. And we are going through the real practice and daily practice. And I will ask Javier to present to us uh, uh, his experience on left main calcified complex lesion. Please, Javier. Thank you very much, uh, Benjamin. Well, it's a pleasure to be with all of you and sharing uh, this view about this, of course, very important uh, topic and, and, and subset of lesions. Uh, these are my conflicts of interest. Now, why to use IVL in the main, in the left main coronary stenosis? There are a number of reasons that make this a unique technique for plaque preparation in the left main. The first one is that left main typically is a very large vessel. And so there is always uh, typically a mismatch in the size of atherectomy devices that we use or, um, or, or laser when we are trying to um, prepare the plaque in such a huge vessel. Now with uh, IBL, we can use uh, up to a four millimeter balloon, which means that we can really prepare the plaque in a much uh, deeper uh, way and much closer to the real size of the vessel. The second aspect is that uh, in, in, in a large uh, majority of cases of left main stenosis in clinical practice, we have involvement of the bifurcation of the lady and the uh, circumflex artery. And of course, I mean, it's always a great aspect of safety that we can keep two wires over there when we are performing intervention in the left main. Uh, of course, if we're using a therectomy, we cannot do that. We have to use only one wire. And, um, uh, and in this aspect, you know, it's very sort of reassuring the fact that you can use um, lithotripsy to treat the left main bifurcation while still it is protected by two guide wires. And the third aspect is that the risk of downstream embolization to this huge uh, territory that is um, 
the downstream, the left main coronary artery is minimized because you are not generating a therectomy gravity. And the studies have demonstrated that the possibilities of non-reflow are minimal with this technique. Now, um, I, Benjamin mentioned that I was going to share my experience, but it's, it's much nicer to show our experience combined with that of other European colleagues. We put this together uh, in this uh, European registry of um, IBL in left main stenosis that has just been uh, um, accepted for publication in JAK cardiovascular interventions. Uh, it may be actually visible uh, by the time that we are looking into this uh, video. Uh, now, the uh, primary point was um, met because we had 100% success stent delivery and expansion of the stent with less than 30% uh, residual stenosis and uh, a TB3 grade flow. And in terms of secondary endpoints, uh, we also that, that were, were more about uh, safety. We found that there were no IBL related dissections, impaired flow, coronary thrombus formation of ventricular arrhythmias, there were no in-hospital deaths, reinterventions, or stent thrombosis. So I'm going to share with you one of, um, of the cases that we included in the registry. This is this 94-year-old uh, lady we presented with a non-STEMI and has this uh, nasty, severely calcified left main stenosis, uh, Medina 111, with the involvement of the LAD and circumflex coronary artery. She had preserved left ventricular ejection fraction, and um, we we, we discussed this with, with our um, heart team and it was uh, agreed that we should perform a percutaneous intervention. What we planned was to perform a tap technique, uh, but before that, of course, it was important to perform an in-depth plaque preparation of this heavily calcified vessel. So we opted for using IBL for the reasons that I just outlined before. Now, here you can see the characteristics of this vessel. You can see the, the huge vessel size. So we started first uh, with a 2.5 millimeter shockwave balloon, uh, basically to open towards the, to, to condition the plaque towards the um, uh, um, LED. And you can see here that we are first uh, treating this. You can see uh, the, the burst of energy that are uh, released. Now remember that we are occluding the left main. So what we do in this case to avoid deep ischemia, we perform less than 10 deliveries of energy. We just limit at the number of, of, um, uh, of energy to uh, five or six at the maximum. As you can notice, we were assessing with that uh, the dimensions of the vessel. Once that we had treated this with the lithotrips, it was very easy to go after that with an IBUS balloon. And now we are doing the same with the circumflex. This, of course, is very interesting to understand the distribution of calcium, the proper landing zones, and of course, to make accurate uh, measurements of vessel size. Now we are using a four millimeter uh, shockwave balloon, of course, and required for treating that uh, heavily calcified uh, circumflex artery. And you can see here that we are now treating the left main bifurcation. Again, doing the same, being very cautious. We had um, a contralateral, uh, vessel access to in case that we needed to use an um, intraortic balloon pump or uh, a support device but you know we, we were confident with this good left ventricular function that we would be able to to manage uh, probably without the need of additional uh, left ventricular support and actually it was it went very well we did not have deep episodes of um, of uh, uh, hypotension uh, so in part due to this attitude of um, being conservative with the length of your uh, uh, burst of uh, IVL of energy to the vessel. After that, we just optimize uh, the, the, the vessel with um, other uh, rounds. As you can see, uh, we are just making sure that we have a very good expansion of the balloon. And one of the beauties in this particular regard is that in many occasions, you don't need to perform any additional dilation. You go directly from the four atmospheres that you use to uh, inflate the IVL balloon. Uh, and once that you have seen that the balloon expands, indicating that you have uh, prepared properly the plaque, you can go directly for stenting. And that's actually what you are seeing here. We are, as, as discussed before, we opted for a tap technique. So we first went with the stents uh, towards the circumflex coronary artery. We are making the implantation of the vessel. And after that, uh, and performing pot and, and recrossing, we will, uh, we, we did implant the stents towards the LAD. 
again, it's, 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 it's very surprising, it's really, really impressive to see the way and the, the depth of uh, plaque modification caused by IBL. And you really get used to it after a few cases. But uh, I must say that uh, now after a considerable number of cases performed at our institution, we still get surprised and become surprised by you know the the uh, the way that the the, 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 the heavy calcified vessel gets modified by this technique. Um, an important part in any left main intervention, but I must say that also in heavily calcific, uh, calcified vessels, even more important, is to ensure that you have proper stain expansion and opposition. Uh, and this is basically what we were doing at this stage, making sure that everything looked uh, properly first in the circumflex coronary artery before embarking in the final step that will be the management of the, the stenting of the bifurcation using the uh, tap technique. So here you can see that we are doing a kissing balloon techniques to make sure that we are uh, ready, getting ready for, for the tap technique. Um, we use for this also rotational angiography. We also took advantage of using uh, stent uh, enhancement to make sure that we had the right position of the stent directed towards the LAD, not protruding much into the stent directed towards the circumflex as you can see here. Um, and after that, we just, of course, uh, double check with IBUS that we had reached a very good result. Um, and that was uh, already very close to the end of the procedure, which uh, revealed uh, a very good uh, result from an geographic perspective, as you can see here. I must say that in this situation, we tend to use also a lot of um, co-registration with angiography because it's really useful to understand if you need to perform additional treatment of, of a particular segment of the vessel. So as final uh, remarks from, from our experience, from the experience of this European group, is IBL uh, is a safe and effective tool in plaque preparation in the left main uh, location. The occlusion time that is associated with inflating the balloon in the left main coronary stenosis can be reduced by applying uh, abbreviated IBL cycles. This is something that um, we really found very helpful in this uh, specific location of the coronary artery. Uh, the use of large IBL balloons allow a unique degree of plaque modification in this large vessel setting. And finally, uh, also in heavily calcified uh, vessels, um, also with IBL, whenever you are performing an intervention in the left main, the, the use of IBUS is a really important tool um, in facilitating device selection identification of stent landing and so on, and also the optimization of the results of stenting. And with this, uh, I thank you for your attention and I look forward to your comments. Thank you so much, Father, for this outstanding presentation. Amazing cases, really. Um, I have some few questions for you. Um, first, what is your experience when you are dealing with eccentric lesion? Uh, how do you perform? Is that you need more bursts? Do you need more inflation, less inflation? Well, please tell, tell us your experience. Thank you. It's, it's a very important uh, point, Benjamin, because um, when you have this eccentric nodule of calcium, sometimes it's, it's really difficult to, to get, you know, an open expansion. And even you get the impression that sometimes IBL uh, is less effective because perhaps you have dissipation of energy in the contralateral walls, etc. But yet, I mean, it is, we believe that it's more effective than many of the techniques that we have um, available. Uh, what we believe is that in some occasions, a, there's a very good synergy between the use of rotablation uh, and, um, and IBL, or even uh, cutting balloons and IBL. I think something that we have noticed in some occasions. So it looks like, you know, it, you may have a synergy of these two devices, of these, of these uh, devices, in such a challenging scenario. Yes, you're right. And I think it will be Michael topic of the synergy between the different techniques. Um, do you have some experience with the shift of the uh, plaques when you are treating the bifurcation? Did, did you see something in your experience? Yes, of course. I mean, what we know by now is that the main reason for uh, side branch occlusion is displacement of the carina. This is something that we know uh, very well. 
But it is true that um, you also have an effect in very rigid uh, segments of the vessel sometimes. What the effect you have is that you may displace a whole large plaque uh, and facilitate also more side branch occlusion. And in that regard, our impression is that because uh, IBL acts in depth into the calcific plaque and in a way returns a lot of plasticity to the whole segment, that in a way you may facilitate um, the more selective treatment of the, of, the, of the vessel without having a sort of stick uh, at a distance effect of displacement of the, uh, of the calcific plaque. So we don't have data about it. Uh, I must say that uh, we have done a lot of bifurcations using IBL and the results have been uh, very good. So we, we, we feel very comfortable. Of course, in addition to that, remember that the distinct advantage of IBL in this situation is that you can keep a wire in the side branch, which of course is, is, is a key aspect of, uh, of safety in case that you have side branch uh, uh, occlusion. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely, one of uh, the advantages of IBL is to keep the side branch open with a, with a guide wire, parallel guide wire. And um, in, in your registry, what is the main duration of cycle that you use? Because you perfectly show that we are dealing with the left main, possibly instability, hemodynamic instability. So um, what is the main duration of the cycle in your, in your study? Yeah, there was huge variation between operators. I guess that because it is related to the, very, the, the differences between patients. There were also a number of patients that were performed, you know, uh, with um, insertion of an impeller or uh, any left ventricular support device. But um, overall, in our own experience, and now it's, uh, I speak because we adopted this very early, we keep a very uh, close monitoring of pressure we, um, in a way, try to understand how sensitive the patient is to um, uh, ischemia. And therefore, you know, we typically performed uh, perhaps uh, cycles of five uh, rounds, deflate, wait for a while, etc. But if the patient, you know, has a very good, um, say, it's, it's, it's a resilient patient, does not have a, an impact of ischemia on, uh, on aortic pressure, then, you know, we may perform the whole round of 10, of ten, of ten um, shocks. Thank you so much, Javier. Thank you for sharing uh, with us your, your experience. You. Michael, do you have some uh, experience in Hong Kong with uh, calcified left main disease and IVL? Yes. Um, surprisingly, we have a lot of calcified vessels in, in Hong Kong in Asia. And uh, with the availability of uh, this uh, IVL balloon uh, just about a year ago, um, we have actually used quite a number in left main uh, lesions, partly because, um, as mentioned, um, we can actually keep a wire when we encounter distal bifurcation lesions. We can keep a wire in the circumflex and, uh, uh, while we are doing this arterectomy. And uh, the other reason is uh, for rotor blader, left main is usually very big. So rotor blader usually won't be able to, to, to modify the plot uh, a lot. Uh, we also have the orbital arterectomy device available, but uh, as you know, it is not sort of indicated for osteo left main stenosis. So for left main with the availability of uh, 3540 shortwave balloon, we uh, use quite a lot actually in the uh, calcified left main uh, stenosis in Hong Kong. Thank you. And it's a perfect introduction uh, of your lecture that you will show us how IVL can be an adjunctive tool with other uh, devices in very complex lesion. And so please, uh, uh, Michael, we are just listening for you. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, present to you uh, one of our uh, more complex uh, cases and the early experience of using the shortwave IVL uh, in Hong Kong. Um, my case uh, was a 75 years old gentleman, uh, diabetic, hypertensive, and with hyperlipidemia, angina, as well as heart failure symptoms uh, with ejection fraction about 30%. Angiogram show actually a severe triple vessel disease with totally occluded LED as well as totally occluded right. Um, LED uh, CTO was uh, of a uh, J, J, J CTO score of two. So in view of the impaired uh, ventricular function, uh, we start off with uh, 
impeller support, uh, uh, this is the impeller uh, CP that we put in, eight French uh, EBU guide. We would, uh, we actually target at the primary anti-grade approach. If we fail, we would uh, resort to septo-septo retrograde. So we uh, started with a filter XTR guide wire loaded onto a, a turnpike spiral catheter. Uh, luckily, with some manipulation, we are able to cross the uh, total occlusion of the LAD. And then we have to decide what should we do next. If we go to the um, uh, algorithm of uh, managing calcified coronary artery disease, you will see that uh, if we can pass a, 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 a imaging catheter, then we would probably do a imaging first. But if we cannot uh, pass an imaging catheter, we can either uh, pre-treat the lesion with rotablator or orbital arterectomy. And then once we treated this, um, we can actually uh, uh, use a, a, a shortwave lithotripsy balloon to further modify the calcium so as to allow us to have a more uh, homogeneous expansion of the stand that we are going to put in. So that's why we actually use an upfront motivation uh, with this case is a one five burr uh, going all the way uh, down across the CTO, across all the calcium and got a quite satisfactory um, uh, 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 flow. And then we performed uh, OCT, which actually, if you can see the uh, uh, live images as well as the uh, fixed photos, this is the usual case that we see in Asia, in Hong Kong, very extensive, very diffuse and very thick concentric calcium with a, 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 a thickness of over one, 1 1.5 millimeter. So a rotablator has produced a thread for us to pass um, the, the, the catheter, for us to pass a balloon catheter, but it won't be good enough for us to do the stenting right now. So what we uh, have done is we use uh, two short wave balloons, uh, 2.5 mm at the more distal part of the LAD and uh, 3.5 at the more proximal uh, area. So as to crack the calcium to facilitate our stenting procedure. And then we performed a, a, a OCT again to see how the short wave balloon have produced this uh, um, uh, uh, fracturing, fissuring of the calcium. Uh, as you can see, in the live image as well as the uh, steel images, that uh, the um, no, the short wave actually fractures the calcium both in the intima and it goes all the way down to the media. This greatly increased the compliance of the vessel and facilitate our standing procedure very much. And then we are able to put in uh, uh, four stands uh, from the distal LAD all the way to the left wing, and. Uh, uh, you can see from the uh, images of the OCT that I would say the stand is uh, uh, quite satisfactory, expanded and um, uh, opposed. Um, that's our case. Uh, we actually uh, are greatly honored to do the first case uh, of shortwave lithotripsy in Asia in the hospital last year, May 8th last year. Uh, this is the first case uh, uh, in Asia. Um, actually, it was uh, uh, already a left main case at that time. So up to now, uh, in Hong Kong, we've done uh, uh, 420 shortwave cases. And in my hospital, we've done 50 something uh, cases. Uh, we've done uh, cases with all the uh, uh, complex anatomy, diffuse thick calcium, concentric calcium mainly, uh, or some osteo lesions, both osteo left main, osteo RCA, bifurcation lesions, CTO, as I've shown you. Uh, 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 even in uh, ACS STEMI, when we cannot cross anything, we will uh, resort to um, a shortwave balloon to help us to uh, open up the track. We have even done uh, a number of cases with instant with stenosis when we see incomplete stent expansion due to previous uh, thick calcium. Uh, as shown in this case, we have used uh, a lot of uh, combination uh, uh, therapies for the arthrectomy devices, 
like we use this uh, in this case the rotor shock, uh, and then uh, and in several other cases we use the orbital shock as well. And just recently we've actually used this uh, peripheral shockwave balloon to help our TAFI procedure uh, when we see a very calcified narrowed uh, iliofemoral arteries. We just pre-treat the iliofemoral with this shockwave balloon to facilitate our uh, big shift uh, insertion and then our uh, TAFI uh, procedure. This is the uh, initial experience in Hong Kong that I want to share and I welcome any discussion and questions from both of you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Michael, for this uh, very nice case, very complex. Um, I have some question for you. In France, we don't have endovascular imaging because this is not reimbursement, so we don't use it uh, on every cases. So can you give us some key features uh, of angiogram when we you use IVL in primary intention? Right, I think uh, sometimes uh, calcified vessels is uh, very easy to pick up even on thoroscopy or on angiogram. If you see the vessel is very calcified, then our uh, threshold to use a thorectomy devices or the shortwave balloon is uh, uh, actually uh, very low. And when we see a reasonable uh, lumen, we would probably start with the uh, IV well balloon because it is very easy to use. It's just like an ordinary uh, coronary balloon. But if it is very tight, very, um, like in case of CTO, you can just pass a guide wire across the lesion, then probably the uh, IVL balloon won't go that easily in that sort of scenario. In that case, we will probably start with uh, a, a, a small burr, rotor blader, make a channel, and then uh, try to crack the calcium with the IVL balloon. That's what we usually do. Great. And you are dealing with very complex lesion. And um, in your Hong Kong experience, do you have uh, treated osteal lesion? Especially, uh, I'm thinking about the, the right coronary artery, which is always a, a difficult lesion to, uh, to treat because of the eccentric going from the outer. Do you have some experience with shockwave in these situations? Yes, we have used uh, that in a couple of cases uh, quite successfully. I think as long as it is sort of more concentric calcium, it works better. But uh, if it is like a very eccentric calcium, uh, they're all very osteo uh, position, sometimes uh, it might not work uh, that well. Uh, in that situation, we might uh, start with a rotor blader or sort of a scoring balloon, uh, a, a, a cutting balloon instead of the uh, IVL. Uh, because uh, it, it doesn't really work very well for the eccentric lesions. But uh, our experience with osteo-RCA, osteo-left-wing are very good um, because most of these lesions are actually quite concentric uh, calcified. Thank you so much, Michael. I'm going back to Javier. We are treating definitely complex lesion today. So uh, what would you advise to have as adjunctive tools in your cat lab to, to use with? the IVL to facilitate IVL treatment? It's, it's a very important point. Um, we typically, in many of these complex cases, we need microcatheters sometimes to advance wires or to exchange. We typically like, you know, sometimes to advance a combination of a very stable and rather floppy wire with a microcatheter and then exchange for, for um, a high support uh, guide wire, you know, that will facilitate further treatment. We rely a lot also on the use of uh, extension guiding catheters, uh, guide catheter extensions. I mean, we, uh, this is very, very useful and you can first obtain a lot of support that sometimes is required to advance the device, you know, safely. You can even sometimes uh, use it if you are using a seven French uh, guiding catheter, which again, is something that we use sometimes in these cases, you can choose an uh, extension of uh, six French. So it navigates a bit better. Uh, and you can even use it as a sort of a sleeve sometimes, you know, to advance devices. Could be even the shockwave balloon or could be, you know, the stent once that, once that you have uh, performed plaque preparation and that you are ready to go. 
so finally, as, as Michael has mentioned before, I think something that is very important to remember is that there is no conflict in performing a small dilation with a small uh, high pressure balloon in order to navigate properly with the IBL balloon. Yeah, but remember that the IBL balloon is, is not a, an angioplasty balloon, it's, it's a much more uh, complex device and has many more elements, therefore the profile is a bit uh, uh, larger than a conventional balloon. What is key from our understanding is that you should not overstretch or try to aim to overstretch the vessel first with a large balloon, because then some of the benefits of IVL, which will be to soften the calcific plaque and to uh, facilitate a more even expansion of the stent or, 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 or a balloon later without causing tears you know, in the, in the, in the vessel, uh, will be lost. So the idea is to use a balloon just to make able to the passage of the IVL balloon and then perform uh, adequate plaque preparation. Thank you so much. Thank you for this very personal comments. So we are going to carry on about uh, daily patient outcome from uh, insight from registry. So as you know, the development of IVL was based on the discrete clinical trials with the CAD one, which was the pre-market study with 60 patients, uh, followed by the CAT2 post-market European registry with 120 patients. Both of these uh, studies are uh, already published. And uh, Shockwave Corporation just finished the enrollment of Disrupt CAT3 study, which was a worldwide study with nearly 130 patients. And we are looking for the, the results next. But as we mentioned, in uh, um, the introduction, this patient, uh, this patient included in this kind of trial are very highly selected and does not encounter for the patient that we are in our daily cat lab. Uh, as you can see, this angel, this complex lesion of the ostium of the right coronary artery, or on the right side, this long lesion, very calcified of the proximal and mid LED involving uh, the diagonal. And both of these lesions cannot be included in clinical study, can be safely and, uh, and with effectiveness treated by IVL. As you can see on the angel, with the use of 3.5 millimeters shockwave uh, balloon for the right coronary artery and the four millimeters for the LAD. So what is important is to learn from the real life, from all commerce patients and actually, uh, according to the growing experience of the physician, there is no new data who are coming in the literature. And the first of the first three with Javier was uh, associated with this publication is uh, the, the Nicholas Vermeer team who published on nearly 80 patients, 80 all commerce patients split in three groups, a very high successful uh, strategy with uh, uh, stand delivery with uh, less than 20% with you in nearly 80 patients for all the groups. And it confirmed in this study that the 30 days MACE are very low, uh, less than 2%, uh, and which are very uh, robust data and confidence to uh, those published in the district client trail. And so we perform a, a similar registry in French with 10 high volume uh, center in French, and we including 179 patients. Um, the baseline characteristics are those that you can find in, in, the, in the coronary study, but what we find is very complex lesion uh, because 80% of patients was B2 and C lesion. And what was shown in uh, nearly 200 procedures is that the device success or the procedure of success is nearly 90 to 95 percent with a very low uh, number of complications, less than 2.3 dissection angiography and no no reflow, a, a final uh, TME free flow in nearly some percent of patients. But I think that main result is the outcome. Uh, when you see the outcome of in hospital, the MACE rate is only six, seven, six 0.7%, which is mainly driven by periprocedural peri myocardial infection. And when you are interested in the follow-up, you can see that nearly 90% of patients are free from MACE in the follow-up at 12 months MACE. So what we've learned from the registry, from the real life, 
is that the, on unselected people, we can find some similar results with alveol with a very low in hospital and midterm maces and a very high procedural success, even in this unselected patient. Thank you. Probably what I would, uh, I would ask is, um, um, how do you envisage the um, dissemination or the adoption of IBL um, in the near future? I mean, what, is, what has been your our own experience when you know you have or we have seen colleagues who are start doing their cases, you know, and uh, what, what have learned? So, you have, have you served as a proctor? Have you performed uh, supervision of other people, or could you comment something like that? Or yeah, I think what we can comment is that very, first of all, that atherectomy remains with the low penetration. Uh, it's definitely. Yeah. Obviously, it's more easy to use than atherectomy, and probably the safety profile is better, so we can communicate on it. Benjamin, uh, thank you. I mean, this was a very nice uh, update on data coming from trials, but also from uh, real life uh, registries. Now, there's a lot of interest now about uh, plaque preparation and, 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 and the treatment of calcific plaques. Uh, what do you think that there is this renewed interest in, in this specific uh, type of lesions? Thank you, Ravel. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think prep lesion, the preparation of the lesion is a key, a key issue for the next year. You know that the diabetes is burdened, the hypertension is burdened, and all these factors contribute to coronary calcification. And what we know is that the calcification is associated with the worst clinical outcome. It's perfectly known. So there is a place for IVL, for disrupt and prepare the lesion. Of course, we will need robust data uh, from CAT3, from the next uh, study, which will be ongoing. But definitely the preparation of the calcium will be uh, a, a target in daily practice for every physician in CAT lab, actually. Now, another aspect is that adoption of atherectomy over the last three decades was um, moderate, to, be, to, to say it in the, in the best possible terms. Do you think that IBL can facilitate more the adoption of uh, plaque preparation in, 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 in this uh, subset of lesions? Yeah, for sure. Uh, atherectomy is suffering from a low penetration, uh, probably because the adverse events in the literature are actually higher than those reported with IVL, but um, I think we don't have to oppose it, uh, the device. Uh, you have perfectly shown in your, in your clinical cases that we can need both. Uh, but of course, uh, for young physicians who are afraid uh, with atherectomy and in good indication, I'm pretty convinced that IVL has a very important place in our daily care Benjamin, if I can ask, uh... In Asia, in Hong Kong, we see a lot of very thick, thick calcium. Um, what's your experience uh, in handling this very thick calcium? Do you think the IVL balloon will work well in this sort of very thick, thick calcium? Thank you, Michael. Yes, very pertinent comments. Uh, what we learn from OCT sub-study is that more it's, more it's calcified, more it works. So I'm pretty convinced that uh, in this kind of very thick and deep calcium, uh, IVL is very interesting, especially when the media calculus, as you say in your presentation of the device, that uh, these uh, uh, acoustic waves are working on media calculus, which is not affected by atherectomy. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced that it's a perfect indication for IVL. Great, thank you. Okay, so it's time for me to uh, close this very uh, interesting one table and I think that the key message that we learned today is that uh, IVL is definitely safe and useful in daily practice. It's easy to use, uh, especially on unselected population because we were afraid about the results, but we have some data uh, growing in the literature to treat this kind of patient. Uh, we have seen that you can have a broad use of IVL, left main combination with uh, rotablator, 
uh, osteal lesion, bifurcation lesion. And what, very, what is very interesting is that this data is coming from non-sponsorized study. But another point which is very exciting, it's there is a, a very scientific emulation in the field of IVL, and there is a multiple ongoing or plain study which are uh, we will going. I know that there is uh, the pooling of the CAD1 and the CAD2 um, data uh, to have an overview on eccentric lesion, but you have also left main study in the UK with James Pratt. We, we have bifurcation in uh, Dutchland. We have, of course, uh, two big national registry with the French and the Spanish registry, which are ongoing. And all this uh, study will give us additional data to support IVL in our daily practice. And now I would like to thank you, my friends and colleagues, uh, Javier and Michael, for your valuable presence uh, uh, and expertise. And uh, I hope to see you next year physically in Europe, this year 221 in Paris. Thank you very much. Thank you.